Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna show you a little bit of my art journal. I recently read the book Wake the Bones and I loved it so much and it inspired me to make three art journal pages. So I thought, yeah, this would be really different for my channel, but it'd be fun if I did kind of a speed painting art journaling with me while I review the book and talk about it with you all. I started out by making my first page in Procreate. I knew I wanted to have three pages and the first two I kind of had an idea in my head of what I wanted them to be and then the third page I wanted to have the freedom to create whatever I wanted to create when I got to that page. So the book follows this group of friends. There are four friends. We're following mainly Laurel and she recently came back from failing at college and she's trying to figure out her life back in this small town. She's in love with her best friend and she doesn't really know if it's the right decision for her. She kind of just feels like a failure. She's dealing with the fact that her mother died a long time ago and she doesn't really feel like she knows who she is or who her mother is. And so she has picked up taxidermy as a hobby and she makes these beautiful skulls and bones and sells them on Etsy. And then she also works the tobacco field with her friends when it's time to pull the harvest. We are also starting to realize that there is this devil creating problems on her farm and she believes that her farm is cursed and that she needs to start figuring out and working with this local teenage witch to figure out what's going on and how they can stop this curse. This book was a contemporary magical realism, romance, horror, weird genre bending book and it was so great and I enjoyed it all so so much. So I knew for my first page I wanted something where I was going to kind of show the duality of the town. I wanted to focus on the fact that there was kind of this light and dark and I really loved the imagery of having a giant skull in the background especially since that is such an important reference to the story and so I kind of have this collage going on around the sides of it where one of our main characters really enjoys taking Polaroid pictures of him and his friends and so I wanted this kind of like Polaroid pictures that he would have taken on the left where they're fun and exciting and they're summertime and they remind you of the good old days and on the right it's kind of like when the curse starts to happen and bad things are happening and there's witchcraft and there's dark magic and there are demons and devils coming and attacking everyone and there's blood. My next two pages like I said the second one I kind of had this idea in my head where I wanted the main focus to be Ohio and kind of this idea that the land is cursed. I took some direct quotes from the book. The exact slogan on the book's cover is something rots something rises and that was really important to the story and also the city of Cincinnati was really important as this like focal point of escape for some of the characters and so the quote that I used for the second page which I really really enjoyed was there was no decomposition only a chill lack of it without rot nothing could grow and it was kind of this idea that in rot, in decay, there is life and there is growth. On the final page, I know we're not there yet, but I took some of my absolute favorite quotes from the book and I went with what I was feeling with them. And so I'm gonna read you those quotes right now because I think that they're a really good summation of some of the beautiful writing that this author, Elizabeth Kilcoyne, has and how amazing her, she's a debut author and she just did such a good job with this writing. So the first quote you'll see on the third page when we get to it will be, the more complicated monster went to work in church with folks who thought of him as an all right sort and then came home and beat his son because he thought hurt was something Isaac ought to inherit. That really, really spoke to me. Isaac does have to deal with domestic abuse in the story. That is a trigger warning that you need to be aware of going into it. And I will get a little bit more into Isaac's story once I tell you the final quote and then we move on. So the final quote is, fight me all you want, but you can't hold me down without holding me close. And I just really feel like this story was such a found family, such a bringing together of people in the face of adversity, in the face of magic. So fantastic to read and I loved every single minute of it. There were so many quotes that I was just saving on my Kindle while I was reading it and I just 
I, I, I like I'm so excited for you all to be able to read this book when it comes out later this year I think it's going to be a hit and I hope that I'm not the only person out here who's absolutely loving this wonderful book so our main character Laurel does have a crush on her best friend like I said but her best friend Isaac um, not the person she has a crush on a different best friend has a crush on this boy in the town as well and it's really interesting. I feel like a lot of YA books the focus is put on characters realizing their LGBTQ plus representation, realizing that they don't fit into the heteronormative culture of our world and what I really appreciated about this book is Isaac knows that he is gay and isn't grappling with that fact and isn't dealing with it and isn't trying to recover or tell his family or whatnot. Like his family knows about it, the community knows about it, he knows about it. It's about him trying to realize sometimes love isn't enough and that sometimes you want something and you the person you love or the person you want to be in a relationship with doesn't want that future and you have to compromise or you have to learn to give up that person in order to have the future you want and it's about finding what would make you happiest. Would it be being with this person or would it be going off and finding your future? And I really liked seeing that as his main struggle instead of his main struggle being about the fact that he was gay. I also really loved our witch character. She is described as fat and also not necessarily pretty, but also radiant and standing out and something completely independent and powerful and strong. And I don't have a page for her, but I thought that she was just a great addition to the book. Found Family reminded me so much of the Found Family elements in The Raven Cycle. If you're a big fan of that book, I think that you're going to enjoy this. There were certain characters that reminded me of characters straight from Raven Cycle, and the weird magical realism elements definitely reminded me of it too. But this book was way more of a horror story than The Raven Cycle ever was trying to be and so I think that also you're going to get a few elements from books like House of Hollow where there's going to be some weird rot decaying body horror that you need to be prepared for going into the story. Overall I really loved this book as you can see I mean I made three pages for it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic and I can't wait for it to come out physically so I can get a copy and I can reread it and I can highlight in my physical copy and I highly recommend that you guys go and pre-order this right now but I did end up rating it a 4.5 and I think some of that is because it didn't quite fall into any one particular genre and while I love the genre bendingness of it it was marketed to me as a YA horror and I felt that the horror elements were not strong enough for me to call it a horror. Even though there were these great moments where I felt like I was having a jump scare, I felt like things were coming out and popping out at me and ready to just fight and there was body horror and there was rot and decay and there were dark horrifying elements. It wasn't a huge part of the story that lasted throughout the entire thing so I felt like that could have been a little bit stronger. And I will be picking up other books by this author in the future. I absolutely loved her writing so much and her characters and I'm really glad that now I can put her pages in my reading art journal and I can have these to look back on to to remember the vibes of this story and what was going on with it. This was my art journal. I hope you all liked these pages and enjoyed listening to me review this book. Once again, I highly recommend you go pick this bad boy up and read it. If you'd like to know any more details about any of the things that I did in this creation of this art journal, ask me down below and I will let you know. Since all of the images in here are just for me and I'm not selling them to make money and I'm not putting them online besides this video, I feel perfectly fine taking copyrighted images, but when I could I did search for stock photos and most of the photos I used are stock photos. Of course you know the Michelangelo's hands on the Sistine Chapel are not that way, but I believe that almost everything else in here was a stock photo. Beyond that, most of my supplies are just paints or pens. Uh, I love my handy dandy glue stick. I mostly use acrylic paint when it comes to my art journal and my pens are just a weird array of different things. I know that I use a Stadler 
fine liner and that I have this one pen that I don't know what it is because the whole entire pen is in Japanese except for the word Tombow and um, my gold paint pen which I absolutely adore and love. Anyways, let me know down below if you liked this kind of video. Maybe I'll be able to do some more of this with you all. I had a lot of fun and I'm really excited about this and I'm excited to show you more pages in my art journal in the future. So I hope you're all having a good day. I hope that this February is treating you well and I hope that you check out Wake the Bones. I don't remember how my outro goes, but until next time, I will talk to you in the comments. Bye.